was quite skeptical. I became more and more skeptical uh, about teaching harmony in the traditional way. Um, I was using uh, the book of Oldwell and Schechter, uh, Harmony and Voice Leading, and that's really a good book. But I uh, had the idea that students didn't pick up the, the essence of everything. And um, if you uh, allow me, I, I can please go ahead ex explain that yes. in w by by means of two anecdotes. Um, one was um, I remember um, a program that we had on the on the uh, concert conservatory of Amsterdam is called uh, analysis and performance, and then an analysis teacher and a instrumental teacher came together and taught uh, in one group a couple of students about the one particular piece. And I remember that one of my colleagues um, had such a class with um, a world famous cellist, at least world famous in the Netherlands, and they talked about a, a Bach suite. And one of the students uh, played, well, I, I don't know, the, the second one or so, and he actually didn't know what to do with that piece. And my colleague started to, to talk about the harmonic underlayment of, um, of that uh, suite, of that piece. Uh, but the, the cello player uh, interrupted him and said, yeah, we cellists never think in terms of harmony. Oh, wow. whereupon, <laughs> my, where, whereupon my colleague uh, replied, uh, yes, I can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> now, before you conclude that all cello players are stupid, of course, not at all. No, not Actually, at all. My, no, no. Uh, my, my, my wife is cellist and she's much smarter than, than me. <laughs> but, um, all wives are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, that's true. But um, that, that made me think, perhaps, uh, do we need as, as theory teachers to, to look through the mirror? and ask ourselves the question, what are we doing wrong that even um, a famous cellist uh, doesn't use the knowledge that we deliver to them? Yeah, so that, that actually that was um, uh, far before 2007 when, uh, when I met uh, Bob for the first time. And that was a world-class world player. Absolutely, yeah, and he was specialized in, in early music performance, and um, so and he was really aware of what we, he was doing, but, but harmony didn't play a big role in his uh, way of thinking. But uh, another thing uh, later was uh, when I was uh, the, the head of the theory department um, in Amsterdam, and I had an office hour for students, and uh, they came to me with all sorts of difficulties, problems, etc., and I could help them. I, at least I tried. And uh, once uh, a girl came to me, a second year student, and she told me, um, um, Jop, I don't understand anything of harmony. And I looked in her files and I discovered that she had good grades and she, she passed her first year exam without any problem. And I confronted her with that. And uh, she said, yes, but... I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm able to make some little puzzles, but uh, when my teacher is going to the piano and plays just what I wrote down, then uh, when he stopped the harmonic phrase, the, the sound was immediately gone. So there was no memory, uh, no meaningful idea of what she was doing actually. So these two anecdotes um, perhaps explain why I... And she was a good a student, skeptical. right? You're saying she was, she... A good, she, she was a good student, yes, and, and very reliable, and uh, she really wanted to learn. But she, she, she didn't know what, what to do with that. Is that around the time that, that you had that switch you were saying, right? Now, that was before uh, Janning again. And um, uh, then he um, uh, started to introduce uh, Partimento Pedagogy, and for me, that was a sort of bomb that was dropped down. <laughs> was, <laughs> uh, so actually, uh, just uh, yeah, the partimenti that he introduced were so clear. And um, you looked at the bass, and it was, was as if the bass was speaking to you. And of course, I, of course, I was a teacher. And uh, another question was, of course, how students would um, uh, react on that. But, um, yeah, actually, the essence of it was um, not about thinking in, in choices of chords or so, but in uh, thinking in, in terms of, uh, of patterns. And um, I wrote in the, in the preface of my book, uh, it was a sort of opposition between a holistic approach, 
hmm, in, the ter- in, in terms of, of uh, Partimento en Jeringen, uh, versus a more atomic approach uh, from court to court to court to court. Uh, Jenning himself in his uh, last book, Child Composers, he calls that uh, the idiom uh, approach or method and the, um, the grammatical um, method or the open choice um, um, method. And the way how uh, little children, for instance, le- uh, acquire language is much more the idiom approach than the open choice. So they don't think in terms of... Um, of um, grammar or the choice of word, but they just imitate their parents. Hmm? And actually that is also, uh, I think, uh, the point in Partimento teaching, you learn patterns and you imitate them. So what steps did you then take to put this into practice? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Of course, that um, I didn't really immediately um, had an idea about how to, to do that. But I started to make just some exercises for my first and second year students um, uh, to experiment with, with, with that, uh, more pattern based than uh, just the grammar of chords. And um, um, it, it, it took actually years or a couple of years uh, before I really got the idea of building a whole method uh, on that. And um, in the time also um, Giorgio Sanguinetti came with his book, The Art of Partimento, which of course also helped to uh, to form my ideas. And um, when I go back in history, I think in 2013 or so, I got a scholarship by the uh, the, the Dutch government of education uh, to do some, to perform some research on, on schemas. That, that was my own choice. And um, I uh, posed myself the question, um, if we take the, uh, the schemata of uh, Bob Jerningen, uh, can we also apply that in other styles than just the Gallen style? Yes, and that's a very important, that's a question that everyone asks, basically. Yeah, the, the point is that um, um, our um, task, our teaching task is not just only uh, focusing on one style, but uh, covering at least a whole um, uh, yeah, classic romantic period. The quote-unquote common practice. Yes, the common practice period, yes. And um, so I started some research in, in Beethoven, Schumann, Sch- Schubert Schumann. And uh, what I found actually was a lot of um, yeah, Gallant schemata, uh, so to speak. But not Gallant anymore, but transformed in, into a new style. Yeah, so uh, the Romanesca in a Beethoven style, or the printer uh, in Schumann. And uh, like that, also Schubert, uh, in the music of Schubert, you can find a lot of those, those schemas, uh, but transformed um, and more up-to-date to the own uh, yeah, early Romantic language. Uh, so for me, that was um, a sign that I could go on with um, starting actually to uh, form a method, to design a method, uh, which was based on on the common practice period, uh, like most harmony books do actually. And uh, I started with Corelli and I ended with Brahms and Tchaikovsky. And uh, of course, um, there is also a lot of uh, fragments in uh, those uh, compositions that cannot be seen as as gallant schemata, that that would be really naive to think that. But you can uh, speak of harmony uh, in Tchaikovsky or in Brahms or in Beethoven or in whatever composer in terms of of patterns. So just to, to take out the more holistic approach, uh, from Partimento teaching. 